I'm joined here with Tom Zimmer, my director of Force of Snap. So, first I want to ask you, like, obviously some people might not know Netball very well, so just like your background information, how you've got into Netball, yeah. what positions you played in the teams you played for? Yeah, so um, I've been involved in Netball like everybody else started when I was 12 at school, loved the sport, uh, went off to uni to the University of Bath. Um, that was the best netball program in the country at the time. Um, got picked up in the Super League into England. I played for 10 years. Played two years out in Australia in the ANZ um, Professional Championships. And then, um, and then, yeah, got into player coaching a couple of years ago at Surrey Storm. Player coach for about five years and decided to retire last year. Um, and then this position came up at Wasps. Um, which I was really excited about because I'm a Midlands girl, um, so they got the chance to come home. Um, and yeah, and actually get to first or well, second season of full out coaching and not playing. Well. So I saw on The Guardian the article about Nick being uncool. uncool. So what, do, what is your take on that? Uh, you know what? Um, I sort of made a tongue in cheek tweet about it just because um, my. My issue was that I, I don't think it was it was her the, the reporter trying to be a negative about yeah. netball. She actually plays netball herself. I think in my issue with it was the naivety. There are over hundred thousand people playing netball every week in this country. Um, it's a huge sport. Um, we come down here tonight on a Saturday evening and there's over three hundred people here watching the under 19s play. It's a, it's a huge sport. And, I think, as I said on, on Twitter, it's the definition of, of what cool is. I think the problem is we, we say we want to support women, we say we want women to be fit and healthy, and yet there's still this stigma around what's cool for women to do. Yeah. And actually, I think what's cool is, is women being talented and confident and powerful and, and um, enjoy and, and not feel ashamed to do something. Because I think we put each other down a lot and actually, Netball for me is one of the, the best things that girls can do for confidence because they get to play in a team with each other, support each other, and you get to keep fit and healthy, but it's not cool about that. Exactly, and the government have like given a 16.9 million grant, so it's obviously the chip that the players are doing something about it. It's still the biggest participation sport in the, in the country, yeah. and along with the likes of football and rugby is growing now, and cricket and foot, um, and uh, tennis and athletics. We've got so many sports for females to be involved in. You, you shouldn't feel embarrassed for getting hot and sweaty yeah. and getting on a court and um, and being good at something. And, you know, I, I think it, we've just got to change the stigma about what a sports person yeah. is and and, um, and yeah, and just support each other a bit. Yeah, because I know you like commentate on film on Sky Sports and they're doing a lot more coverage now. Like when I was younger, I grew up watching that more on Sky Sports and things like that. So they're my government. And I think now the younger generation has more coverage has been shown more younger people will watch it and they think, oh, I'm going to do that at maybe a higher level than just grassroots. Definitely. My, um, my role model when I was growing up was John Barnes. And that's because <laughs> uh, my dad took me to the football from age, age six yeah. and I used to go down to watch Leicester City play. Um, but at the time, John Barnes was a hero for Liverpool and I thought it was amazing and I had posters up in my room because there were no female role models. I mean, yeah. the, the first sort of female role model I remember was somebody like Sally Gunner. Well, she was great, but I didn't want to be an athlete. I was no good at athletics. So, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't have that to aspire to. I saw my first England netball game when I was 18. Um, but up until then, I knew nothing about it. So it is, I think it's really important that, um, that the likes of Sky, and they've been brilliant, the BBC yeah. show in the game, I've worked with Sky for years now, and they, they take it really seriously, you know, with the analysis that they allow us to do, and, and the, the fact that they've wanted to play so much and show so many live games, I think they've really set the standards of, of what female sports should be about. And, yeah. um, it's the only way it's ever going to grow, because you need to be able to see it to understand what it is. Yeah, and I mean, you're now the director of Lost Network. So what is the hardest challenge that you have faced so far? <laughs> Where do I start? <laughs> it's, um, it's been probably one of the toughest thing, challenges I've ever taken on. Yeah. And um, Some people would think it was easy because they've come into such a brilliant structure mm -hmm. and behind such a great brand. And they've been so good that this was not just a stab in the dark. They, they wanted to take on the netball. They wanted to produce um, another team, another yeah. team under their brand. Um, and I've loved it, but we set up a club from scratch, you know, from the players to the staff to to the event to the media to the production to the whole age group. You know, we're, we're starting from scratch. It's been the busiest six months <laughs> of my life, um, but I love it because I love netball. And, you know, I, I would to get to start something new. I wouldn't change that. Yeah. So how do you like find the balance between being friends with the players when they're not the court? 
and the uh, uh, the person they look up to who tells them what to do. Um, it was a tough one, and uh, player coaching. I said the, the hardest thing to start off with was man management. Yeah, purely because um, I went straight from playing with them one year to going into yeah. player coaching the following year, and I got it wrong a lot. And um, you know how I spoke to players, how. Um, we ran playing meetings, how honest I was. It was really yeah. hard to be honest with some of my mates. So that had to evolve and it had to evolve quickly. I still laugh now. Um, they have private WhatsApp groups that I'm not on. So they can <laughs> talk about me and do whatever I want. Yeah, so that, that works. And, and yeah, we've had to find a balance. But I, I yeah. did definitely didn't say it right. And I think a lot of a team sport is about your player management yeah. um, and how you get to know the players. And, you know, we've got a balance. And it works for, for most people in the squad. We try to keep a happy environment. And my biggest thing is being honest. Yeah. As a player, I've had lots of coaches lie to me in the past, and um, and that's not a great way to get the best out of somebody. So honestly, yeah. okay. And you do a lot of community work at the Wasps. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, like a couple of schools have come in to play with the girls and everything. How important is that to get the community involved? Obviously, as a new club, you want to get the momentum building and get people watching at the game. Well, they all have a great fan base at Wasps. Involved with the rugby and their community um, projects yeah. they do are absolutely amazing, and we wanted to to, to get on board with that. It was important to us. You know, this wasn't just about importing players in. That was for the first year, but my dream is to get in four years to get this being predominantly detrimental to team. Yeah. Um, so that's the aim. With that, there's got to be a lot of background work. We we ran a community day a few weeks ago. We had over 600 kids um, and adults come from different clubs and schools all over the region. Uh, which was absolutely amazing. We held that at the Rico and they got to experience what it would be like playing at the Rico, yeah. involved in our fan zone. Um, so it was an amazing day. It was great to see so much interest yeah. because you know, you're starting a new network team, you don't know what the uptake's going to yeah. be like. So just thrilled with that. The community project will keep happening. That's something that, that is really important to us and, and it's something we believe in because sport should be accessible for all, whether you want to play at the elite or whether you want to be respected. Yeah. And and Netball is the sport for it. So, you touched upon your aims for the club. What are your aims for this Super League, the first season? <laughs> I, I, steer, I steer away from saying uh, winning, the, winning the league. Uh, yeah. We want to finish in the top four and then anything can happen. Um, I think we've got a squad that's strong enough to come into the top four. It's amazing because people are labelled as his favourites after we announced the eight, first eight plays. And I find that um, really difficult to understand because this is not in the... It's, well, and it's not just about individual players. Bear in mind, this is the same. there's a quite a few players I worked with last year who people didn't even pick us for the top yeah. six. So it's about how, what you get out of the players and how you make them into a team. And you know, we've had that difficulty because they've not they don't all live in Coventry. We've had yeah. to bring them all in. Um, so making them into a team has been the has been the toughest part, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I would hope to be in the top four and be really challenging. That's good. Well, um, you train at Warwick. So, do you think that it's beneficial for the players, the facilities they have, bringing in future players, because it's a university, bringing in play, and then growing the West Midlands community? Yeah, we were at a really different, different stage, it was something that Ross wanted to do, was setting this tone. We don't train at our match day venue, and that's something that happens yeah. in Australia when you move into big venues, it, it just doesn't happen. So, we, we wanted a training partner, and Warwick was a perfect fit for us. Not only have they got excellent sports facilities, they're also building new sports facilities. Yeah. They want to um, break into having team sports there and they're really setting the trend to becoming Team Warwick and um, Warwick Sport and having lots of different elite sports people there. So it's a natural natural uh, partnership for us, which really excites yeah. us. Um, and it's great for, the, great for the players, you know, we've already had some players starting to look at Warwick Uni as options for next year. And, that will help us in creating yeah. this West Midlands brand. So do you think that in the future there will be like a crossover between just British players and English and then international? Do you think that like, international players will want to come to teams like this? Or, you know, so at the moment we, you can have two imports in your team yeah. and uh, lots of players you use the two import rules. So we've got Bondi and Sony here from South Africa and we've got Sam May from Australia. Um, but you're not getting the likes of their top string, their players yeah. that we saw in the test series a few weeks ago. And that's what I'd love to see. At the minute our leagues clash, so they run yeah. at the same time. So we're at that difficult position where they're going to choose. Yeah, exactly. Where we'd, we'd love to have those players come to our league. And getting our top English players back, you know, the likes of Joe Hart yeah. and Sabrina Guthrie. So that's going to be important. I think the way the league keeps going, and with teams like Wasp getting involved, and, 
when the brand was starting to move forward, you know, mm -hmm. when I was at Storm that used to push forward with Team yeah. Bath, with these big names, they will be trying to promote that and trying to up the level of the game because that's what we all want. A semi pro league yeah. that players can play in all year round, that they can earn money from and actually be a professional mm -hmm. network players around the world. So, for less serious questions now, go on. Uh, okay, some predictions. Where do you think Leicester City will come <laughs> in the Premier League? Oh, God. <laughs> Please don't let them go down. <laughs> I don't think they will. You, don't, you know what? My dad and brother are diehards. They go every single week, every yeah. home away game, never miss anything. Season ticket holders, they keep assuring me that we're too good. I'm not sure they're really good. So I've seen as I went up to the Middlesbrough game and we were awful. And, uh, and I'm just a little concerned that we, we... But I find it amazing because they're a classic example of a team environment about how quickly confidence can work. Yeah. I mean, I'm an awesome supporter, so I, I can't really sit here and say, oh, uh, yeah, we're doing great, so... Yeah, but you guys are always near the top. There has to be a winner, like... It's in the it, well, yeah, but it depends what you count success, you know? Yeah. You want to be challenging and ask me to challenge Leicester, unfortunately, this year, and no one to challenge it anyway. Yeah. Okay, so, before you, like, go out onto the pitch where like, you used to, did you ever have a pretty much song or, like, a ritual? No. No, I don't, no, I, don't, no I think it's rubbish. <laughs> I think it's absolutely rubbish. I think whenever you start anything, you, you start with things like that. So when yeah. I was younger, but um, after losing games as well as winning, as well as playing, well, well you know, it's not, it's not really. Yeah. And actually, the more barriers you put in place for yourself, the, the difficulty you can have in games. I think um, for me, I'm I've never been a big prep person, and I think yeah. I think that's why I've, I've always managed to to play how I have because mm -hmm. I've, I've had less things to worry about. Yeah. Um, but for some people it works. But, but it's it's <laughs> okay, last question. Yeah. If you could have any celebrity in your team right now, who would it be on there? Ooh. Non-sporting. Non-sporting, yeah. it would be Gigi Haddon. And I'd have her because then we definitely can be classes on the court. And just think of the hype we get. Exactly, we get so much promo. And, but then how <laughs> sad is that? That's that, what I mean. That actually, that's who we need to get the promotion. Because I think my girls are just as cool. Oh, netball's on the rise. Netball, so. Apparently so. I missed the trending yesterday. My phone died. The one oh. the day Netball was trending. I know. And I was in London and my phone had died. But um, I saw yeah, everyone tweet the about it. It was, and I was so proud because uh, you know everybody talks about Netball being a family, but um, yeah. it's the, like I said, the best unkept secret. Anybody involved in Netball knows about it. Yeah. And uh, it, it is. It's on the rise, and, and things are going to change. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you.